Hi there, and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. Today's topics, turbocharger boost control. In order to understand how boost control works, we first need to understand how a turbocharger works. Basically, a turbocharger uses engine exhaust gases to spin up a turbine wheel, which is mounted on a common shaft with a compressor wheel. The faster you spin the exhaust wheel, the faster you spin the compressor wheel, and they're heavy. The compressor wheel pulls fresh air through the air filter and jams it into the engine, resulting in what we know as boost pressure. Pulls air in through here, boosted air goes out through there to the engine. So why does boost pressure make a difference to engine power? Well, the more compressed the intake air is, the more oxygen dense or heavy it is. The more oxygen you can get into the engine, the more power it's gonna make. But there are limits. You can't just put unlimited boost into an engine and see what happens. Well, well you could, but it wouldn't last very long and it wouldn't end well most of the time. We need to regulate the speed of the exhaust turbine wheel, in turn regulating the speed of the compressor turbine wheel by bypassing exhaust gases around the exhaust turbine wheel with a component known as a wastegate. As the name suggests, the wastegate wastes engine gases by feeding them directly into the exhaust system and around the exhaust turbine wheel. The wastegate uses a boost reference spring-loaded diaphragm in order to determine just how much exhaust flow should be directed around the exhaust turbine wheel and how much should go through it. Seems odd to waste all this energy, but there's reasons why. The turbocharger assembly spins at over 100,000 RPM, and it's important to regulate the exhaust gases to make sure it doesn't overspin, result resulting in catastrophic failure. But it's also important to regulate the exhaust side to regulate the intake side. When we have control over the speed of the compressor, we have control over the boost pressure. Now to make it a little bit more complicated, we also want electronic control over the boost pressure. So we can have different boost pressures at different engine RPM or depending on the ethanol content of the fuel or on a simple boost switch on the dash. There's endless combinations of boost control strategies, but we can do that in another video. In order for the ECU to control the boost pressure, it needs to measure the boost pressure. For that, we use a manifold pressure sensor, and that's mounted after the throttle body, but before the intake valve. And that measures the pressure in the intake manifold. We also need a boost control solenoid. Remember when I said the wastegate uses a boost reference spring, so this part along here, um, which is set as the boost pressure. Well, this solenoid is used to manipulate the amount of boost pressure that the wastegate sees. The more pressure we bleed off, the more exhaust gases the wastegate will direct through the turbine wheel, resulting in more boost pressure. In the ECU, we set our boost target versus, let's say, engine RPM and ethanol content. Then, when we're at, say, 85% ethanol and 6,000 RPM, we want 20 pounds of boost pressure. The ECU will pulse the boost control solenoid, directing pressure between the wastegate and the out-to-atmosphere in a delicate balancing act to get the target boost into the engine. Because exhaust flow isn't consistent across RPM, the engine loads and amount of work the boost control solenoid does in order to manipulate the wastegate and achieve the target boost pressure are pretty remarkable. So next time you put your foot on the throttle and feel the boost come on, have a think about that poor wastegate, the environment it's working in, and how good the boost control is considering how many factors are involved. Thanks for sticking with me till the end. My name's Scott and I'll see you next time.